So welcome to the HA day, the HA server fest, high availability. We'll start by a, an interview between Vicenzio Cerbaro and myself. Hi, Vicenzio. Hi, Kai. Nice to see you. So let's start from the very be beginnings. Uh, from a definition, what is high availability? Well, high availability is a very broad topic. But I think uh, when we look at um, the general systems, it means that an application is available with uh, minimal unplanned downtime. So minimal unplanned down downtime, I mean, how high is the high in av availability? Uh, I've heard several measurements of this, the number of nines and the number of hours or days or seconds uh, per month or year. What's a good measurement for the highness of high availability? Well, it, it all depends um, on exactly what you're trying to do. But uh, I think where you can mostly aim to get, get uh, as far as you aim to get to is around uh, two uh, nines after the dot. So 99.99%. You're probably not going to get any better than that because that means around four and a half minutes of downtime per month. And very few cloud providers even provide that high of a uptime guarantee. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so I'm still on this definition part. That makes sense what you just said. Um, uh, high availability has two components, high, and you said something about the altitude, the highness of availability. But what does it mean to be available? Available for what? Is it for reads? for writes, for transactions, for analysis, what is it? Uh, what's the availability for? So if we're taking into account uh, and, uh, the system as a whole, I think uh, we can just say that as long as all functionality is present, I think the system is considered to be online and we can go with that. Okay, so available for uh, the purposes of, of what it was designed for. Makes sense to me. So. Uh, now, going a slight bit more to the pragmatic and concrete side, uh, what can you delegate to your high availability system? What do you need to do yourself? So, in other words, what can you automate? Um, so, the, the reason why you set up a high available system is you want to make sure that the user doesn't see any downtime. So, you need to automate um, failure detection in some way and fa failover when a failure does happen. Um, so this is the minimum that you need to make sure that the system is highly available because you can't have a human respond uh, in seconds for any particular problem. Um, also, you need to automate reporting of failures. So you need to make sure that your uh, DevOps team is in charge and is aware of uh, a failure that has happened and that they can fix it until that failure gets compounded by another one and then your system goes completely offline. Okay, so, so the first level of defense is something automated uh, so that uh, the DevOps don't have to respond within seconds or minutes, but the second level is then to ensure stuff uh, longer term. So yeah. what are the typical dangers that high availability protects against? What type of failures? Um, well, high availability generally uh, protects um, from things that happen sporadically. Uh, so we can have a look at the hardware. So if hardware fails, high availability should, a high availability system should be able to tolerate a broken hard drive mm -hmm. uh, or a broken network connection. So this typically means redundancy. Mm -hmm. uh, what it doesn't protect against is bugs in your software so if your software is down because of a bug, uh, it's not the high availability system's fault that it's uh, down. So uh, HA is one part of a very robust system, but that's not the whole part. Mm -hmm. So how much of this HA is then implemented through hardware, how much through software, and how much through, shall we say, processes? Uh, well, I, I'd say that it's a like a tiered approach. You can't make a cake without all the right layers. So you first have uh, hardware redundancy and hardware backups. And that's how uh, cloud providers generally give you the, the 
according to their service agreement uh, uptime. But then um, you need to be able to handle particular problems in software. Um, so that means um, you need to be able to handle uh, additional load that sometimes happens. So in, in some sense, scalability melds with um, high availability because you, you usually can't have one without the other. Um, so, so are they, you say that HA needs come bundled with scalability needs. So are they in conflict or do they pull uh, in the same direction? Um, I think they usually pull together to get you the right, uh, well, the right system because you, you can't, if the system is online, but you can only uh, handle one or two users, then it's basically offline for everyone else. So mm -hmm. what are we supposed to do? And if the uh, hardware itself isn't working, or if, say, you have your database and that one is offline, then may maybe your hardware can scale to hundreds or thousands of uh, users, but without the database response, the application is still offline. Right. So um, uh, you're talking about other systems there. So, so what does it mean to have an HA system from a database perspective and from an application perspective, or are those the exact perspectives that you should uh, see? Um, well, since we are at the MariaDB server manifest, let's have a look at the database perspective first. Uh, so a HA system for databases usually involves more than one computer to hold your data. And that can be either as part of a replication chain or as a cluster of nodes, like say a Galera cluster. Um, and then there's an additional layer uh, that you need before you end up with your application, like your web servers and the, the way they need to scale. You need a load balancer on the database itself because the if everything that gets put into the database goes to one single machine, you're back to square one where mm -hmm. um, nothing will scale properly. So uh, trying to get back to the basics and the, the terminology and definitions, I hear a lot about this hot and cold backup. The way I understood it is that the temperature, hot or cold, refers to the cache being filled with the most frequently used data so that uh, you would get faster response time directly after a hot switch over. Is that correctly understood? Um, for hot caches, yes, that's, that is correct. Um, if you're thinking about hot backup, that's a bit of a different topic. That's more like um, something that you can replace as the system is running. And that's where usually uh, clusters are uh, where they shine. So a Galera cluster can um, get rid of nodes and add new nodes on the fly, and you wouldn't notice it. With, with the help of, of a load balancer, that can also be very transparent to the application. And that cannot, I mean, and that refers to hot. But what, what's the alternative in those scenarios where you have a cluster? I mean, is there a cold way of, of doing that? Does it mean that taking, would cold then mean to take the whole system down and have some short uh, downtime and yep. then reboot it? Or what does it mean? Yep. And that's why I defined high availability as unplanned downtime. Because if you need to swap something, you would plan for that downtime. So that, that's not part of the HA uh, percentage of... Uh, well, some people that. argue that the, the, there's no excuse for having downtime, even if it's planned. It, it still is. It should be measured as part, like diminishing the number of nines. But I suppose that is a, a matter of opinion and, and, and definition. So, uh, yeah. or? Oh, well, of course, you can plan. Uh, to not have a uh, planned downtime by always having redundancy. But uh, all these redundancies end up costing way more. So there is a balance. It always depends on what exactly you need and how much you can tolerate as downtime. Yeah. But from the end user perspective, sure, uh, the downtime is downtime. Of course, if it's during the middle of my night, uh, as an end user, I don't suffer but uh, many of these systems are 24-7, so it doesn't help necessarily help all that much. But uh, I think this goes uh, to show that the definition of what's desirable will depend on the application. Yeah, uh, it, it always depends on what you're trying to achieve. So uh, uh, another definition thing here is, uh, let's say that there is 
uh, downtime, either planned or, or unplanned, and then you have a switch over hot or cold. So uh, during that time, I feel very, very ill at ease. Isn't, isn't the system very vulnerable then? It's sort of HA uh, uh, because if something fails, it still continues to work. But what if there is a second failure during that recovery time? Uh, that's probably not very good, I, I assume. That is something you definitely need to take into consideration. So that's why I mentioned that your DevOps team needs to be notified and they need to get to work uh, as soon as possible. Um, so you, you can define a system to withstand multiple failures, but uh, you need to um, take a stand as to when do you think this is so unlikely to happen that we're not going to guard against it. You can't so I read you as, I, I read you as saying that nothing will work according to your uh, exact will unless you first define what your exact will is. Exactly. So uh, looking very concretely at MariaDB uh, and comparing it to other systems, say MySQL, what's the difference in HA options between Maria and MySQL? So the, uh, the big difference is there are actually not that many differences in what you can achieve. You can achieve high availability with both MariaDB and uh, MySQL. So you have a, a clustering solution for MySQL. You have replication solution for uh, MySQL as well. Um, where MariaDB uh, tends to shine is that it gives you more flexibility, especially with the use of storage engines. So there are certain uh, um, deployments like you, you can... Um, achieve high availability, not necessarily uh, with the redundancy part, but with the scalability part. So let's assume we, uh, we handle the redundancy some other way. You still need to, to cover scalability and with uh, particular storage engines like Spider or what we're going to talk about during the first expand, uh, you can achieve uh, scalability as well. Mm -hmm. So what are the challenges with HA from a, uh, well, I suppose it's from a DevOps uh, perspective or, or probably not the developer's perspective. So who is actually going to have to address this issue? The developer, or the DBA, or, or specifically De DevOps as a cross crossing between the two? Um, so the way you achieve an HA system is by working together with all the teams involved. You can't have one person uh, being in charge of everything. So the... The DBA needs to make sure the database is up and running and has the uh, necessary uh, scalability systems and failover systems put in place. Uh, however, the developer also needs to make sure that he's, um, he's working according to the constraints of his system. Mm -hmm. So he shouldn't expect that if you, if you need, for example, say 20 nodes in a cluster, when you add so many nodes in a cluster, you can't do so many inserts just because there's so much traffic that needs to go between um, those servers. So you have to do a, a trade-off at some point. Do we do two clusters and write the application so we can talk to two clusters? Do we work with the load balancer and encode the load balancer to do that? So it has to be a discussion across multiple teams. It's not just one person who's in charge of it. Mm -hmm. Uh, then in all these HA discussions, there, there's talk of single points of failure, and everybody understands what a, what a single point of failure is, and you want to avoid them as much as you can. But what would, uh, what would be a typical single point of failure that people are willing to, to negotiate about, uh, or, or uh, what are acceptable single points of failure? Uh, those are probably difficult choices, but do you have any viewpoint on it? Well, I, I think um, the, the first thing that, that comes to mind is the uh, if you have a load balancer, you're probably not as concerned if the load balancer uh, doesn't have a backup because it's probably very easy to get it back up because it usually doesn't have any state, so you just can uh, start up. Um, however, it's not recommended to have any single point of failure in any system because that, when that, that thing goes down, it's, it is going to cause downtime and you will not meet your uh, uptime metric. Sure, but I mean, uh, some places do not have geographical redundancy, so they would be in the same geographical place 
And if, uh, if there's a Fukushima there, that's sort of a single point of failure, but these Fukushimas don't happen all that often. I suppose that's yep. a yeah, that's... part of what you design as well. And yeah, and that actually reminds me that um, having redundancy not in just one place. So you, um, there, there was a very recent uh, fire in one of the data centers in, uh, in France. And yes. that thing brought down a significant number of websites, but because, and I, I imagine most people did set up some sort of um, different geographical deployment, uh, they were able to get back online relatively quickly, although the data center is still not online. Right, right. So uh, you've been giving lots of good uh, pointers here, good ideas. Um, um, and there's going to be many presentations now. Any particular additional pointers you want to give to, that the uh, audience should should think about uh, while looking forward to the, the upcoming presentations? Uh, so I want the audience to be very critical uh, when they are evaluating an AHA solution. Uh, they need to put it into perspective as to what they are trying to achieve, because um, there's no one one size fits all, and it, it all depends on what you want to do. So uh, what the presentations are going to show is a set of tools that you can employ, but that doesn't mean that you have to employ all the tools, any of the tools, or just one or two of them. You need to um, judge according to your use case what you need to do. Mm -hmm. uh, makes a lot of sense. What about... Going really back to the very uh, topic of MariaDB, uh, choosing a version of MariaDB, is that uh, something that you should have uh, extra on your mind or is it just uh, do go with the latest version, uh, do what makes sense? Uh, or, or is there any particular HA perspective other than go with the latest production version? Oh, as, as a MariaDB developer, I'm always going to recommend you use the latest version. The latest stable version. Yeah. Uh, so we work very hard to make sure that uh, you don't have any problems during upgrades. But I do realize there are certain deployments that require um, older versions. And because of these constraints, you have to pick the version that works for you. Um, but do note that uh, newer versions of MariaDB usually come with bug fixes or performance improvements that can simplify a lot of your other parts of the deployment. Mm -hmm. Anything important you still wish, wish to add to uh, beyond the questions that I've asked you? Um, so let's, um, uh, let's have a look a, a bit at... Um, so when I have a, um, a checklist of things that I uh, would like to do when I'm trying to set up an HA system. And I mentioned a couple already. So I said that um, we want to make sure that automation of failover works. And we want to make sure that the DevOps team knows when a, a failure happens. But one thing that is very uh, seldomly paid good attention to is how we do proper backups, but not just doing backups, but also restoring backups. Because you do not have a backup unless you can restore from it. Mm -hmm. So I highly recommend that uh, everyone invest a significant time into doing backups and testing recovery from backups because that is part of the uh, failure resolution part of HA. Cool. Hey, those were good pieces of advice. Let's see what our presenters now have to say about the various solutions. Thanks, Vicencio. My pleasure.